This video revises trainer kite basics and the principle behind the wind window. Read the description below. Set up in a flat open area with no hazards or wind blocks. Work out which way the wind is blowing, then hold the kite on your downwind side. Unroll your kite, tucking it upwind side into the ground. Once your kite is secured, check the bridles are not tangled. Now grab your bar and unroll your lines, heading upwind from the kite. Note, this is only for trainer kites in light wind. Place the bar with red on the left and walk in between the lines to separate. Connect the lines using a lark's head knot, like so. The small trainer kite is launched downwind of the pilot. Again, this is only acceptable for small kites and light winds. Tickle the bar to gradually fill the kite with air. When the kite is ready, pull and it will launch. The wind window is the space in which your kite can fly. It is always on the downwind side of the pilot. Firstly, we use clock numbers to describe the angle of the kite. On the left of the pilot, we have 9 o'clock at ground level, then 10 and 11. In the centre we have 12 o'clock, and then on the right we have 1, 2, and finally 3 o'clock on the ground. Next, you can see that the space immediately downwind of the pilot is coloured orange and then red. These are the areas of higher power. The further downwind the kite flies, the stronger the pull. If we look at this from the side, these power zones should be common sense. A kite sitting in green is almost parallel to the wind and will not deflect much air. A kite sitting in orange deflects a little more air and pulls harder. A kite in red deflects a large amount of air and pulls very hard. At first, you are just trying to keep the kite near 12 and in the green zone. To keep the kite in green, steer gently and for very short periods. If you need to steer right, briefly pull in your right arm. If you need to steer left, briefly pull in your left. Always straighten both arms after steering to keep the kite under control and this is a very important habit as well. Once your control is better, move your kite to 10.30. If you use small steering movements, the kite should move slowly and stay in low power. Try keeping the kite parked at 10.30. Then try the same on the right, parking the kite at 1.30. This mimics the kite position during body dragging. Next, try keeping the kite at 12 o'clock, one-handed. Hold the middle of the bar with one hand to steer. This skill will help later when you need a spare hand for the board. Once you can keep the kite in green and under control, you can experiment with the orange and red power zones. Move the kite back and forth between 11 and 1 using small steering movements. Gradually start steering harder. Pull the left or right of the bar closer to your body to steer faster. As the kite turns faster, it will start reaching the higher power zones as shown here. This drill helps you get a feel for where the kite is most powerful, although it is not a maneuver you often use while kite surfing. The power dive is a more useful drill as you can control the direction of the pull. You can do a power dive to the left or to the right. A power dive pulling left is where you start around 12, 
Dive your kite left before slowly returning to 12 to cut the power. A power dive pulling right starts around 12 and dives right before turning the kite slowly back to 12. As well as direction, you can control the strength of a power dive. The more aggressively you steer, the further the kite will drop towards the red. In this first example, the kite is steered with small arm movements and stays in green. In this next example, the pilot pulls their left hand further, the kite turns faster, briefly reaches orange. In this next example, the pilot pulls their arm in aggressively and the kite gets near to red, generating much more pull. You should start with weak power dives and build up. This is a very useful drill as it's a model of how you fly the kite when starting to ride on your board. You should be able to do weak, medium and strong dives easily without crashing your kite. Your kite should steadily return to 12 to cut the power. Once you're more confident, you can try chaining several power dives together to keep the pull of the kite going. There are various safety systems on trainer kites, but they all work on the same principle of just pulling one line and letting the other lines go slack. In this example, as you let go of the bar, the left line goes slack, leaving just the right line pulling on the kite, which makes it flag out, flapping in line with the wind before dropping to the ground. You can land your kite this way, or by steering the kite slowly down to the ground at 9 o'clock, or down to the ground at 3 o'clock, and allowing a friend to catch the kite.